Hi, everybody. Well, hello. Welcome back. Man, it seems like it's been a while since, it does, since we've been it? here, hasn't it? it? It's, well, it has, right? It's been it? three weeks. Three, three weeks. Three weeks. Wow. Went to Vegas. That's right. I forgot. I went to Vegas, so yeah. I made it back, and I didn't win any money, so <laughs> that's why I had to come back. But um, Well, thanks for joining <laughs> oh, us today. It's, it's Val and Roy, and uh, we're going to talk to you about draping is the term, right? So that's draping. what we're going to talk yes. about. Yeah, so the... Um, picture that Kaylee, I think, posted was of some tulips or something that looked really pretty nice, probably a customer made, maybe, right? It so, was. Yeah, really nice. And so uh, that got us just thinking about uh, doing we, projects that involve draping. Yeah, we've done several of these things over the oh years, gosh, and they're yeah. kind of fun. I mean, and you can do them one layer, you can do them two layers. Um, so, and people seem to be sometimes a little bit um, unsure of how to, how to, navigate the firing schedule and everything because the draping definitely indicates that you're you're draping over something not slumping into it so that means we've got like a free fall you know once the glass gets warm enough it's going to start draping down so firing schedules are kind of tricky but we just yep. have a bunch of examples of different ways of doing it yep yeah good i'm glad that you you kind of define the terms i know Thank val you. and i are both in the same sort of page where you know, we we use the term slumping for when you're going into a form. So when you're getting the glass hot enough to get soft and then takes on the shape of the form, right, into it. But draping is going over a form. And so I know a lot of times people just use the term slumping to describe everything. Yeah, this, like, we'll just, yeah, just yeah, do like it. this as an example, right? So this piece, right, uh, is draped over this floral former, it's called. And then it turns into this piece, right? Magically. <clears throat> Just like that, right? And then so then it turns into one of these little candle holders or vases, right? Yeah, We've, and we'll talk about we'll talk about. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more but about. But here's some a of one it, layer but. version here. So show yep. this. Oh yeah. That. I like I like to show how they watch your fingers. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so that that is you know tr truly too. This we talk about sometimes in some of my fusing classes when I have um, people that started in stained glass like a lot of us did before we ever started to oh, fuse. Yep. And they still maybe have some glass around that's really not tested, so that's a little difficult to use in fusing. So, but it's it's glass, it's soft glass, and it will always it will always melt. So yep. this is just a this was remember this one? It's, oh, yeah, a, it's a black iridized yeah. baroque. I know what a great uh -huh. glass. Just a square piece of glass cut and straddled over the top, and then and and these were I don't know if anybody cares, but at one point in time, not too long ago, ten years ago maybe. Um, 15 years ago, these were real popular were to real do, popular. Oh, man. you know, for like craft sales and, and such because it's one firing. So Or weddings, right? Well, weddings, right? Weddings, yes. I've you done could, like a hundreds. I was telling people before, yeah. for, you know, for other people, for weddings, they want to decorate the tables and they were a great yeah, way. This but one was actually one. Yeah, for right. the wedding, uh, for a wedding that they were kind of a centerpiece on the table with flowers and things. And this was really just, a, I think, if I remember right, it was like a 12-inch square over the tall. Um, but this one, I, we liked it. We wanted to show just because, can you see how kind of pretty it ruffled? So the, the, bigger, the bigger the piece of glass, you know, the more it, it's going to kind of not drape quite as evenly. So, mm -hmm. But I kind of, we kind of like this. I think it's kind of a, you know, sort of organic, unique thing. But that, once again, is one layer. So... Kind of a nice little yep. thing for people to do that maybe have extra glass around that they just aren't really quite sure how to fuse with it. So yeah, in contrast to the smaller ones, yeah, you really got like how yeah. that's, that's a little more organic and a little yeah. more freeform. So it is something about this about um, that people don't always want to hear when it comes to draping, but it does involve. I mean, there's not a perfect schedule for this, and like you, as you can probably imagine, every piece we're showing you was fired at a, a different temperature. So. Uh, it started is, to, yeah, yeah, started to drape at a different temperature. Yep. So, so yeah. So the important thing is when we do it, we this is one of the times we don't just program the kiln and go away and come back tomorrow. Yeah. We program it and then we calculate when we think it's going to reach that temperature where things might start happening. So a normal slumping temperature for us is around 1250 Fahrenheit. Um, we've noticed the few that we did in the last couple days. You know, we were there a little after 1100, and things were just beginning. So, you know, I think, yeah. where's my, what one? This one, I think, actually, we shut the kiln off at um, 1160, 11, 60, right? Yeah. 1160. Yep, it was. 
So I think both of these were, weren't they? I think so. Yeah. I think so. And right around yeah. there, which was surprising, right? So yeah, yeah glass starts getting soft around 1100. And um, so really you got to kind of keep an eye on them above that. And, and uh, I, I taught a class in Vegas that involved, we talked a lot about slumping and, and draping. And, um, and I tell people, I mean, especially these things, you have to peek, you have to open the kiln and look inside. And, and I know that surprises a lot of people. They think they can't do that or they're not supposed to do that. But, uh, but hey, go ahead. Yeah, that's right. Val and I give you permission. We we, whatever. It. You know, I, I tell people all the time, nothing stops me from looking in a kiln when yeah. I want to look in a kiln. But, but you tell them there are. Let's go over that. A there's little. a little bit yeah, yeah. of a yeah. Mm -hmm. of a, there's a few little rules to follow. Yeah, there's a few rules, right? Mm -hmm. So for the most part, I think most of us believe that that anything. So <clears throat> glass stones start getting soft to like 1,100 degrees. So I tell people there's probably no reason to look in your kiln until at least then, right? I mm -hmm. mean, why why look in there? The glass is going to look the same pretty much almost as room temperature. So you're not really going to see anything happening until you're above 1,100. Um, and then once we're above a thousand degrees, uh, I think Val and I both sort of agree with this. The risk of thermal shock is like practically reduced to nothing. Uh, the opinion is that thermal shock occurs somewhere in the 600 to 900 range, right? So there would be a reason not to look in your kiln at those temperatures, and that's going up or coming down, right? Mm -hmm. So on either end, and uh, I know for me personally that. The, the coming down part's the harder part for me not peeking in there because I want to see what it's looking right. like. for everyone, I think. But going yeah, but. up, I mean, like as I mentioned before, I, I know at 900 degrees, the glass isn't really doing anything, so it's just a waste of my time peeking in there. So. Just will prolong your, yeah. Your, yeah. your cycle, too, because you're just going to keep flashing a little air so, in there. So. so what we're talking about is, you know, once the glass starts getting soft or getting to a point where um, it's starting to move, uh, then you should start keeping an eye on it, right? Start peeking at it. And it is not as hot as you think. Uh, when I, I talked to a couple of people just a little while ago about that. They're like, well, I mean, the kiln's uh, 1,100 or 1,200 degrees. Isn't it going to, like, burn my face? I mean, what we're well, talking about is... you don't stick your yeah. face in there. <laughs> there you, I, go. you know, and, yeah. And we're talking about just opening a kiln and peeking for two yeah, seconds and barely, closing a lid, right? Just so you can see Just it. so you can see what's going in there, whether it's this, a, this high, a I mean, clamshell or if it's it just the lid, right? Either one works. You know, you just peek in there. Um, see what's going on and close it. Uh, you're going to lose a little heat, but it's really not going to be enough to affect the schedule. You maybe added a couple minutes to what you were doing normally, right? So not nothing too super dramatic. But if you're a real often peaker, you will, well, you yeah, will you prolong. Yeah, no, I, and I'm saying because I do that sometimes. You yeah, know, when it's a little too much. Yeah, now, right? I just think you know it's going to go further than I is thought. Is it, it dropping was. now? Is yeah, it dropping? Is it dropping? Well, sometimes it can be fast, right? You know, especially depending on the schedules. I mean, like. Uh, one of the, I think the schedules that Val and I had done. Was this, yeah, I wrote Mars did you, down. Yeah, we wrote them down. Did you program to Lim's? Lim's we programmed to oh, 1225, yeah, but yeah, we yeah. started watching and it never got. We never. Yeah, we, we were programming them. A lot of times we programmed to like 1200 or 1225, which I can tell you that for me personally, so do you see this little, this is a seven inch square, and um, I fired this piece and it was, I did it at 1225. And it gave me this look, but the 1225 for these larger pieces is too hot. I mean, there's more glass, right? So there's more weight to them, so they're affected by um, gravity sooner, mm -hmm. and they'll just start bending sooner. I mean, if we would have waited till 1225 on these, oh, they they, yeah. they would they would have a much different look to them. Yeah, so. they would. Well, this one too, because this is a good example of how thick and big this one is. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. 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 That's what this one is. I know it's hard to see that. that but that's, hold, yeah, hold that one. Okay. <clears throat> this we did in in the leaf casting mold. Just this one here. Yeah, just for fun, you know. So we filled it with different colors of frit and um, full fuse it. And, I, and typically, maybe people make these castings a little thicker, but it. Oh. I I don't know. Oh, I think this nice. is about the right size to, and th they're very similar. You know, this one was. So we got a little, you know, I don't know. It's. It's it kind a little of, funky. It's right? a little funky. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's fun. I think it's real fun. I mean, to me, sometimes the more organic-looking ones or the ones that are um, not as predictable uh, are, have a little more um, interest to them. But like, right. yeah. matter of opinion, obviously, right? So it's so you could put a little candle down in some of these, <clears throat> and they'd be, you know, like, see, I'd have a little candle in this one. Don't get caught on it. Well, and they'd be kind of cute. Yeah, no matter up, what, right? you know, yeah, exactly. No matter what kind of organic shape. So, so you're gonna, Roy's gonna talk a little bit about measuring because numbers kind of aren't my thing, and um, I just kind of eyeball everything. So, um, but I think that a lot of the times, you know, we worry too much about making it symmetrical, and so I think this is kind of a fun situation where it doesn't have to be 
it could be a circle it could be a square oh yeah it could yeah. be you know like my leaf certainly wasn't you know even in any way so it, it can be kind of fun to experiment around with it yeah the more irregular they are the 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 more interestingly they sort of fall right, right? right. I mean if you look at some of these especially this is another one that looks pretty good right when you see this one as, uh, on the inside you can just see how it, it's pretty random how which petal falls where I mean <clears throat> it has to do sometimes with placement in the kiln I always try to when I'm doing these drapes I try to always put them in the center of the kiln as best I can so in, especially if you have a kiln that has heating elements on the side right you, you don't want it up against one side because that side's gonna heat up faster and that's that'll fall faster so in the center of the kiln is really ideal for these kind of things. I mean, I get it if you're trying to do more than one, uh, then it's probably not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, um, I would slow down the ramp speed a little bit, right? Go a little bit slower if you're trying to heat up the chamber. So we talked a little bit about ramp speed, Val and I did, because, I mean, when you're going slower up, it, it, it does have a tendency to fall a little more evenly, a little more controlled that way. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to keep an eye on it better if it's not going so fast. Uh, I know that there's one that we did a piece in the kiln. Well, I guess it was me. I did a piece in the kiln, and it was too hot. Just when we got, we went live just a few minutes ago. It was about 500 degrees. So uh, we'll see what if we can Seems get like it that out and, and often take us. a look at it. Yeah, I, I had great intentions. You know, while I'm working here, I'm always like, oh, I got to make a project for Facebook, and then I get busy with customers and stuff, and don't always have an opportunity to, to get it in the kiln as quickly as I might right. like. But anyway, um, what was my well, point of that was that. Um, I don't have a clue what yeah, your point was. was. Other than the, the piece that I'm doing, we got some pictures of it, and we can show you what it looks like. Yeah, but. so that's what I was going to start out. We can give you the firing schedule, like I said, that was the these two, the leaf and this. I mean, that, it's pretty standard, and we can, I don't know how you want to do it, Kaylee. You I'll wanna... put it in the comment section below and pin it so that if somebody's watching it later, they can find it. Yep. Okay, Good. okay. So, um, so what I was thinking maybe next is we show the construction. Oh yeah, that probably be a and great then, idea. And then, because if you do, we do get that one cool enough to maybe Kaylee will have to just walk over there with us. Cool. That's what I said. Um, as well. No, we okay. But um, then they can kind of see how the construction, because we've got this picture that kind of goes with this one, and um, and then when they see yours. But if you can picture it, there, you know, the, these were just like three green leaves that I cut. So they're flat down on the kiln shelf. And then the smaller red-orange pieces were, I oh, laid shit. on top in the seam, you know, in the seam between the leaves. And then I had that green circle that I just placed over the whole bottom just to sort of, so everything had something to melt to. And then, yeah, that's good and then you fuse that flat. So that went to a full fuse, right? So. Then once it was at a full fuse, it ended up looking, I'm sorry if the pictures aren't really good, I kind of squish them when I print them. But, um, this is what so, we shared yesterday. Yeah, so that is then the fuse piece that is now straddled over the floral former right before we closed the kiln and draped it. So if that helps yep. with so the... So two-step process, which hopefully yeah. is obvious to everybody, right? So we have to fuse first, and then we have to put it on the form and drape it. Now. Um, a lot of the pieces that, that you see on the table, in fact, like all of these three definitely are just, they're really just a single layer. So they're not the, you know, fusing to a full fuse and we have two layers of glass because we want them to be, look a little more delicate, right? But as Val pointed out, you have to overlap everything, right? So since it's only a, a single layer of glass and that's a single layer, they have to overlap so that there's a, two layers at some contact point so they can fuse together. Right, so you can't just cut out single layers and, and butt them up against each other and expect them to fuse together. They won't, right? They'll pull apart as they try to as they fuse. Yes. And then the other thing too is we're, again we're not going. Oh, I don't know what temperature you did this at, but I'm assuming it wasn't necessarily full fuse, or was it? It no, but I'm, it, it was 1400, and oh, it's yeah. more than I thought it would do. Yeah, that's right? what mine was 1400 too. Yeah, yeah. Just, we were so we were doing some in in what some people like to use the term contrafuse to describe, right? So something in the high 1300s low 1400 somewhere there in there temperature wise. Um, so again, we're trying not to get so hot that the glass wants to pull in and shrink and get to the quarter inch if you uh, know the quarter inch rule. Uh, but things that do have to overlap, I think this one, I didn't make this piece, but just by looking at it, you could tell this was probably at a certainly lower temperature than that one there, mm -hmm. right? So maybe 1370, 1375, somewhere in there would be my guess, if I had to guess. Let's see it from the inside. Oh yeah. Let's see. 
Nice. And you'll notice that often Val did it with her piece too. This one has one also. I'm going to mm -hmm. flip it over. You can see a lot of times, since we're just touching these things up, we want to make sure that the bottom has at least a nice sort of flat spot to it. And so we put a shape on there to connect all the pieces. I think this one does the same thing. Yep, yeah, right. There's a piece on the bottom of that one. You just want to make sure that there's, you know, not a hole in the bottom of it, right? And and that all the pieces are getting fused together. Dorothy is asking if we have a pattern for the petals on the website. We can, Dorothy. Yeah, I'm sure we can get I know. One. We talked about that. I meant to have one um, at, before we went live, but we can certainly get you one. So, for I don't, I don't know which one you want, but I know I have got this one somewhere. So, I'll see. That one. <clears throat> yeah, I have that one somewhere, so that'll be easy to, to gather up. And then the one that we have in the kiln currently is one like this I mean, that this one too. I was kind of be like that one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know, again, this was the one that we saw the picture of that one of our customers made. I hopefully wasn't trying to steal their idea totally, but but I I was making one that looked kind of like this. So that's the fused piece. And again, I did mine at like fourteen hundred. That's what I did mine at. I'm pretty sure. And then and then this is it. So this shows it on top of the floral former. I know you can't really see because the technique that Val and I do is we use fiber paper between the um, the glass and the and the form, right? Right, show them right there. Yeah, yeah, we'll show you. Because right so these are stainless steel, and then so typically, I mean, back in the day, we used to try to get paint kiln wash on. Did you remember doing that? Yes. Have you ever done that before? Right, we would we would heat these things up and then try to paint uh, kiln wash on them. So it was it was wacky, right? It doesn't. Work and it doesn't well really work very well at all. Huh. So then boron came out, which is nice, right? Boron works pretty well, and so we were spraying them with boron. In fact, one of the molds you can see has got a lot of boron on it, uh, um, and I'm sure Val and I got white marks on all our, over uh, us. all over us just from touching the boron. But we, but Val and I actually started using this technique where we use um, fiber paper or shelf paper, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this happens to be the bullseye paper, but the papyrus works just as well. And uh, what we would do is. So this is the barrier between the glass and the mold. And so as the glass falls, it takes the paper with it, and then that acts as a barrier. So when we're done, we should be able to just pick it right up. So I always cut my glass. I mean, I'm sorry, Your I cut paper. the paper just a hair bigger than my project, right? So just a little bit bigger, you can see, just maybe not even quite half inch all the way around, but close to it. And then we put it on there and then, um, and then drape it. Use so, the Dowel yeah, yeah. So then we talk about well, how do you center it, right? I mean, that could sometimes be a challenge yeah. to get this, you know, centered on there because it took me a while to figure this out. But you know, if if you want all four corners to be relatively even, um, it has to be centered onto the um, floral former. So the technique that I always do, I'll do the pencil one first. But so is I just do this with a pencil. And it's that in the way. It feels like it's in my way, but um, and I just come under here like this, and then I use my thumb and I measure. And I say, okay, I got to be that far away, and then I can make adjustments based on it. You really just need to to do two sides. If if they're equal, then 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 you're in the middle. I always do three just for the fun of it to make sure I'm I'm centered. Um, a technique that you were telling me about, right? That you saw somewhere where people use a dowel and then they have marks on it. Um, like, I mean, you could take this and then mark it right here, and then you would always know that that was your seven-inch square, for example. Or you could write inches on there if yeah. that made it easier too, right? I didn't write anything mm -hmm. on this one, but but you could see the same sort of concept. Um, the only thing that gets kind of tricky is depending on your kiln, if you're trying to get your hand in there and get around something, or if you have. I know for me, sometimes I'll do like three or four of them at one time, and and sometimes it's kind of hard to yeah. get in between yeah. them. Yeah, because this one of mine was um, transparent. So if yeah, it's transparent, it yeah. it's easier. And when it's transparent, I do this yeah. to get the crease of the bottom of the deal. And then I can actually, if it's transparent, I can actually see it. Yep. You know, so that's another little. Or I've had, I think I was telling you yesterday that the other, you know, people will do this too, yep. right? So you can lay it on there, trace around it. And then, you know, um, again, you know where the center is. And if you match that up with this, I was telling you, I, I know somebody that actually glues the paper, you know, with Elmer's or with the glass tack, bullseye glass tack, and then so it just stays on there, doesn't move while they're trying to move everything around. And then, you know, then you know pretty much where it should be centered. Um, you could even, I mean, I find the center of the paper a lot of times too, right? If you take a, a, a ruler and make two X's, then you know the very center of the paper, and then you can, I know Val doesn't like all that stuff, but... But you could, depending on how picky you want to be. Um, 
But measuring it, so sometimes people ask us all the time about, well, how do you know, like, how, how do I know what size square to make, right, for yeah. this? And so I measure uh, up along here, across the top, and down, and I take that measurement, and I just subtract an inch from it. And I know that uh, when the glass falls, then it won't hit the shelf. Um, but the tricky part with squares is you have to measure, you know, on the... This is a seven inch square, which is from which is from here to here is seven inches, right? Not from there to there, seven inches. So you have to measure across the square, um, and that would determine the biggest uh, mark you can make here, or like how big the glass could be to so fit on there. So if you okay, so but now if you've measured this, and let's say it is ten. Ten. Okay, and you subtract an inch, which is nine. Nine. Yep. Very good. Then, okay, so then what are you cutting, a nine-inch square? Oh, heck no. Okay, well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think it's oh, well, real clear yet. You just have to cut a square where the diagonal is nine inches. Okay. Well, you could do... I know that, you but could it do, didn't sound You could do real, uh, geometry, right? right? Everybody in the room knows no. A squared oh, plus B squared equals C squared, right? That's Pythagorean... Theorem, right. Right? So basically, if you're cutting Just a square <laughs> and you've got that nine inch measurement, then your yes. square is going to be nine inches to the corners. Yeah, to the corners, right? Yeah, okay. but it's a good point, right? Because it gets confusing. I mean, again, that's all if you don't want it to touch, right? So if you notice on valves, which I thought I pointed out when I saw it earlier, was see this one touched the shelf, and so the ends kind of roll over, which gives it really a nice sort of um, yeah. like a little bit yeah, more organic it, it, look. I do, we do like it. Like I can that. tell you yeah. that again from personal experience. These rolled corners are, um, it's, it's a gamble. Like I've done this one before and I let it longer because I really wanted it to hit the shelf and three of them rolled out, but one of them rolled under. So that's the, the randomness about yeah, it I've sometimes. Yeah, I've never had that, that happen before. Oh, you've never had that happen? Wow. <laughs> okay, I guess that's just me then. Really quick before we move on, I want to circle back because yeah. Dorothy is asking, so, Good just question. to clarify, did you say that you put the round piece of glass in the kiln when you're doing the full fuse pieces? So, I think what we were talking about was the bottom piece. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, that's yeah, they on got top put of on everything there. and then full fused. Right. Yeah. We, so, maybe my picture confused her because that green circle was off was to the, the side. side. Yes. But it was just... I have another picture that I, that was yep. the one I forgot. But anyway, no, then you just, at the very last thing I did was take that circle of green and put it right Yeah, I don't know, again, I don't know how well this picture kind of shows up, but so it's hard to, I know, it's everything. But the circle it. in the middle, so it's just overlapping all of all the stems and the leaves of the tulips. You can actually see it better on this one. Yeah, can you see it better on this one? Yeah, yeah where it's, so that, that circle, yeah, you, like I said before, we need some kind of connector, right, that, that um, touches yeah. well. So the other thing, too, oh, let me talk about real quick was that, so if you don't want things to touch the shelf, then sometimes you have to adjust what you're doing. And in this particular one, like I said, you guys can't see it, but the um, floral former, I'm, I'm raising the floral former off the bottom of the shelf because, um, at the bottom of the kiln actually, because the floral formers we have, we sell two sizes. Well, yeah. I think we sell some smaller ones Little than this. Yeah. Ones. Oops. But we only, but we only, but these are the two main ones and these are the sizes, right? So if you want something that is, um, taller than this and you have to adjust it and so I do stuff like this all the time so here's a kiln post and I would do this right and you can see that I just gained you know a couple inches there um, you need something that so like what I can't do is this right because I don't want the, the glass will hit the kiln post so you need something that's not interfering with interfering the with drape. The, the drape right mm -hmm. Good. I was having a hard time uh -huh, saying that thanks for stepping in yeah and um so you just elevate it, and then like, I just keep, you know, if you need more, then just grab another kiln post. I, I mean, this is, the one that's over there has like two kiln posts holding up the, um, holding up the floral former, and to be honest, I was half thinking it might just all fall over, uh -huh. but it didn't, so that, yeah. was, that was a positive, right? So. so the other thing, too, whether you feel like you need to do it or not, it's going to be entirely up to you, but if you're doing this kind of thing, and you know you're going to be totally 100% there and not forget about it or get interrupted, then fine. But if, you know, what, often what we'll do around here, because we do tend to get interrupted sometimes a lot, because like I bit. said, we start setting our timers to go check on it at certain temperature ranges. And I don't know, so that didn't happen to me what you did, but this has happened to me where you get preoccupied or something interferes with you checking and you come back in and there's 
one circle of glass right here and the rest is down on the shelf because it just stretched, oh, it just stretched so much and you didn't yeah. get there in time to stop it and and so preparing the bottom of your shelf sometimes when you do some of these things that's that aren't quite oh, yeah. calculated you know and that you have to kind of be a part of sometimes just protecting the bottom of your sometimes we have to take the um some people may have to take the shelf out so that they have enough that's headroom. a great point and if you do that i would always put a piece of yeah, fiber paper or something yeah yeah that's actually what i did here again i know we're showing you just a bunch of photos but this is the i took the shelf out because i wanted to gain a little more clearance right so if you take the shelf and the kiln post out that's probably two inches easily that yes. i just i just gained and i'm because the heating elements are also in the lid and i'm trying to you know stay below that as much as i can right. um because so here's the other thing that, that we need to talk about is that the construction of a lot of these pieces on the table are, uh, we mentioned before, right? They're single layer glass, but they're overlapping. And I can tell you on this one in particular, I know that there's like, in a few spots, there's three layers of glass, but some spots there's two layers of glass. In a whole lot of area, there's only one layer of glass. And that difference in thickness affects how they heat up and how they cool down. And it is so easy to thermal shock these. Mm -hmm. um, so again, trying to, you know, don't get too close to the heating element if you have one in the lid. Uh, the other thing is um, slowing down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, slowing down a bit and anneal the heck out of them, yeah. right? Is that what yep. you would recommend? Yeah. Yeah. This one is this piece is actually cracked. I was just noticing it when I grabbed it. So I'm not sure if it's we've had this one here at Delphi for a while. So I don't know. Not sure if it's just a right. handling issue here at Delphi or if it's an issue with the. Um, I think it's probably an issue with the layers because the one of the cracks looks like it's right at where at the, the yeah. right at where the Green thickest is, part is, is right. It's right here at the th where the thickest part's at, and then the crack runs up. So, so I would say with a piece with that many layers, would I would say minimally a two-hour annealing, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would definitely would. Yeah, I would say yeah, especially so, this size. This is right. pretty good size. It's pretty good um, size, and, it, and like you said, it is three layers in places. So, yeah. I would say, and and you know how I do it, not because I'm. It's very tactical how I do things. Um, if I think, if I look at that piece and I think, I really do think two hours is probably long enough to, to hold it in that annealing temperature range. So I, I'll probably go three. Truly, I mean, that's because I'm not going to hurt it. And, you You're know, not going to hurt it. Nope. And it's just like, because there is no, you know, there is no total answer to that question what, that we can be sure is, is correct. So I just try to do my best to, gauge what I think it will probably take and then I add to it some, you know? Just, yep. I mean, yeah. you can't over anneal it, right? So, right. you know, what I, I tell people I know for me is I try to make my firing schedules as efficient as possible. So, you know, I mean, I don't need to anneal for six or seven hours, but but I definitely want to make sure the piece makes it through. So, like I, like you said, I, I do sort of the same thing. I, I pick a number in my head and I just add another half hour to it or something just to just be on the safe side. Um, what Good. else? Well, did you, oh, no, you want to talk about, about well, this is yeah, just let's... a little bit of a different thing, yeah. but it does kind of, it is kind of a very similar way that you're doing your tulips, where you have a center piece and then things are coming out okay. this way, right? Yeah. So that's all this was, was just, um, you know, it was just a circle of glass that I put some vitrograph on and then did these horse heads, you know, and it was all flat, right, I, as I cut the glass overlap the horse heads, you know, onto the circle down here of glass so that they melted to, had something to melt to. And then it was fused flat. And then I just draped it over something. And this is, we've had, I've had this for quite a few years, so I'm not yeah. exactly sure. Yeah, something sure. similar to this, you But it would be but... something like a dome shape of some kind, you know, that we, that we just, you know, put the flat piece on and then I'm sure it was up off of something because these heads were, you know, yeah. needed to be free and clear. So, but it was a situation where, you know, I'd never really, this was a long time ago, I'd never really done anything like that before. And so the key, you know what the key to that is, right? Be there. Be there so you can watch it. And then we maybe should talk about flash venting because oh, yeah, it won't yeah. do you any good just to see the, the desired drape that you want and then just turn the kiln off. That's not going to work. It's going to keep going. <clears throat> so there's this term we call flash venting where we have to vent the kiln down so that we get the kiln into a temperature range where nothing can really happen. So normally, 
what twelve hundred we get at eleven i don't know what yeah. we well we weren't even at i try to get so i try to get under a, i try to get under eleven that's what okay. i personally try to do so okay. right because we want to um like as val pointed we want to stop the process right we want to stop it slumping and then but we don't want to you know crash it like crazy where we run the risk of some kind of thermal shock right no which we won't we don't want to flash which would be below a thousand right. or something we don't right? want to so go below that thousand. so don't do that so i usually go if it can stabilize around eleven hundred then that's usually pretty good and then a lot of the, um, uh, you know, your kiln might, on the controller, you might even be able to just skip segment, right? There's probably a button that allows you to skip to the next segment, which hopefully should be the uh, annealing segment. And then as Val mentioned, right, then you would flash vent a little bit. So we open it for a few seconds, close it for a few seconds, and just do that for a little while until you can get it to mm -hmm. stabilize around 1100 or a little under. That would be and you're, right. Yeah, you're watching your readout. So, yep. you know, as you have it, as you have it open, you can watch how how the temperature's dropping. When it gets close to a thousand, then you shut it again. And sometimes you may have to do that two or three times just to get that heat out of there. But we weren't really that hot to start with, so I don't think it took us. No, it didn't long. take. It only took a few minutes actually mm -hmm. to do that. When you're at like 1160, like a lot of these were, it doesn't take very long to to get it below 1100 and right. stay there. So the other thing to remember is on the way down, the glass is hotter than the air temperature, right? So that. Even when we're reading the parameter and it's telling us it's 1100, the glass is probably a little hotter than that, which is probably okay, right? I mean, that just probably ensures that we're minimizing uh, thermal shocking it. So mm -hmm. uh, we're just, again, trying to think of it as stopping the process. Yeah. What? Before uh, we go look at that other panel, we've got yeah. a question. Dorothy is wondering, okay. um, she's looking at this vase, the one that had cracked, mm -hmm. and she bought glasses luminescent. So when you're doing the full fuse, is the luminescent side down or up? Well, I, I haven't done this with the luminescent, but uh, again, we're not really doing a full fuse here. So the temperature here well, is... you went to do the shape, though. We did not. You didn't on that one? No, not even this one. So this one also is like, again, I, Val and I are not big fans of the term contour fuse, but I do use it because sometimes people understand that we mean not a full fuse, but not a tack fuse, right? So this piece was probably again in the i uh, looking at it would i would put it in the you know 1375 yeah. 1380 range somewhere so again i don't know if the luminescent holds up to that temperature face up uh you uh, you'd have to do a test you know just cut a little piece and throw it in there at, at 1380 and see what it does yeah but the the i don't know but the answer also too is which which side would you use i mean or which how would you it depends on do you want the luminescent inside or do you yeah. want it on the outside and that's you know mostly you know like if you look at mine I threw some um, dichroic frit on it when it was fused flat like this and so when I slumped it that that told me I wanted that to be something that would be visual and so I didn't really want it down in here so if that's what I did then that'll be that'll be up, that surface will be on top. Yeah. So as it drapes down, that becomes the sides, which I think makes whatever texture or coating that you might have a little more visible than if you reversed it and let it slump yeah, into. Like this is a good example too, this one here, yeah. right? Because this is just a piece of iridized glass. And so the iridized coating's on the outside. And I think it's more noticeable when it's on the outside, like Val was commenting, right? If it was on the inside, you'd still see it, but it would be a little more subtle. Now, mm -hmm. I guess probably the bigger too. question is just, again, will the, you know, will a luminescent coating hold up to 1380? That's, that's, I don't know that answer. Yeah, I don't so. know that answer either. Sometimes right. you have to, what they call, cap that, right? And You can't cap it. And you can't, it won't no. work. So I guess, yeah, use it down. Coating. I guess, yeah. Typically, to be safe, that's Dorothy, the one you, you, have would, to fuse. you would fuse it uh, down, face down, right? That's, yeah, face that's down. The and then, recommendation. And then I don't know if it would lift off it during the draping. You know, I've had, I've, I've personally, I have done that. I mean, I've slumped with the luminescent coating up after it's been fused. And, you know, so we're talking 1200 or 1225 even. So it and, could be, as long as you... It, we didn't have, I didn't have problems with yeah, that. do so, your initial firing with yeah. it face down on the shelf. Maybe yeah, and work. then I'm sure it would hold up to 1160. I don't see why not. I mean, these, like I said, these were not that, or 1180 or whatever. These yeah, these were. are, um, the, these two and the, the frit, the dichro frit on here... But anyway, these two are actually the, the coatings, the iridized coatings from Bullseye, and they're very stable. I mean, they don't burn off, so. Yeah, the, bull, yeah, the Bullseye ones do not. Burn. So if that's something, you know, that you want or to Or Oceanside. I think the Oceanside sure. ones are pretty good. It's yeah, I, don't, the, I didn't know that, so. Good, but the, okay. Yeah. Good. So I think that was it. I mean, if you guys have questions later on, I mean, feel free to reach out to us, right? I mean, I think everybody uh, that's been watching us knows how to get a hold of us. 
because some of us can't remember all the different places, right? You can, <laughs> we you can, you can, we you don't see our sheet anywhere. You so. can email us at Facebook at DelphiGlass.com, right? Or just you know, make a com, message us at Instagram or Facebook or uh-huh. those other kind of Do we want to go check the kiln? Media. Yeah, we're, last thing we got to do is so I have one in the kiln that we were hoping to get it done. So if you guys want to just go on a little walk with us, we're just going to walk next door where the kiln's at. And... Um, and we're going to take a look at, and I, to be honest, I don't know if it turned out, so I guess we'll find out, right? We're going to, so we, um, so this is the setup, right? So you can see how it was done. Uh, oh, I heard it. Did you? Yeah. But it's, I mean, that that's cute, and that's over a flower pot. which It's we over didn't. a flower pot, yeah, which we didn't really talk about, so. Um, oh, I don't think you have to get it out. You don't think I can even pick it up? Well, I don't know. We think it cracked, so. Uh, mainly we were just rushing it, right? I mean, you guys can kind of get the idea of what, well, it, no, it's not. Oh, maybe it cracked because it's on the, um. Because it's sticking to the yeah, pot? it's sticking mm-hmm. to the pot. Oh, so cute. That like crazy. Yeah, tornado warning. We oh, go. yeah, yeah. We got to oh, go. Oh, do we really? Yeah. Okay, thanks, guys. Oh, well, thanks guys. for we'll joining us. We'll see you next week, we'll maybe. Yeah, maybe next week.